And let's bring in trial attorney Bernarda Villalona to break down some of what we heard in this trial yesterday. Bernarda, thanks for being here. You know, we, we heard George Floyd's girlfriend, Courtney Ross. She got so emotional talking about how they met. And prosecutors let her go into a lot of detail there. Why was that important? So the girlfriend testified, basically, she is what's called the spark of life witness. So in Minnesota, a spark of life witness is allowed to testify to give the jury more of a personal view of who this person was. So back in the day, there was this case, and actually the case involved a police officer who was actually killed. And what the judge said in that case, that spark of life witness can testify to show that this person is more than just skin and bone. So that was the purpose of her testimony. But we also got some additional information, and that is how they got addicted to opiates, how they got involved in this opiate crisis, which gave some more light to both who George Floyd was and how he got to that place on May 25th, 2020. And the defense also zeroed in on that part of the testimony, the revelation also that Floyd was in the car with two people that he bought drugs from when the police encounter started. So how strong is that for them in terms of their argument that Floyd may have died of an overdose? So it actually is crucial for the defense to get that testimony in. But remember, this testimony can go on both sides because for the defense, the defense is going to harp on this because remember what the defense is doing is that they're saying that the cause of George Floyd's death wasn't the knee to his neck, but more of a drug overdose. Because if you prove that the cause of death had nothing to do with the knee on his neck and more of that it was an overdose, then you cannot find Chauvin guilty of any of the homicide charges. So remember, for any homicide, you have to prove manner of death was homicide and that the cause of death was as a result of the actions of Mr. Chauvin on that day. So that is crucial testimony for the defense. But, however, the prosecution can also argue that because George Floyd was addicted to opiates, and this was, wasn't the first time that he took opiates, that actually his body was used to taking opiates, that he was a functional drug addict, that he would not have died as a result of those drugs, it wouldn't have been an overdose because his body is used to that amount of drugs. Instead, what caused the death was when Chauvin had his knee on his neck for nine minutes and 29 seconds. And we also heard from Chauvin's former supervisor, and he said that he thought Chauvin should have gotten off Floyd after he stopped resisting. Same for the other officers. Uh, he also talked about the side recovery position and how important it is in police training that once someone is restrained, if they're in prone position, you move them to side recovery position to prevent them from asphyxiate, asphyxiating. So given, again, how you said cause of death is going to be so important to this case, how strong is that for the prosecution? That was a bombshell. The testimony from the sergeant was so impactful because that sergeant told you at the point that Derek Chauvin, as well as the other officers, still had their knee on the body of George Floyd and he was no longer resisting, that they should have stopped. So everything after that point was excessive. So if everything after that point is excessive and unnecessary, it goes to the elements of murder in the second degree that Derek Chauvin intentionally tried to assault and attempted to assault George Floyd, leading to his death. So that was so crucial. In addition, the same supervisor, the sergeant, is telling you that they should have moved George Floyd to the prone position. Had they moved him to the prone position, Position, then his death would have been unlikely to have happened. But it's because of the negligence. It's because of the depraved indifference of Derek Chauvin. That's how George Floyd died. So that was powerful testimony. It was testimony that the defense was not able to shape because you have a man of authority, the boss of Derek Chauvin, the first supervisor who responds to the scene, who is telling you, based on his over 25 years of experience, that Derek Chauvin's actions were unnecessary and they were excessive. And I just want to clarify, he, he was saying that they needed to move him to the to the side position. I think you just quickly yes, misspoke my there. Apologies. Rather than <laughs> rather than prone. But
but um, but an important part of that testimony for sure that not that many people are talking about this morning, but you can bet the attorneys picked up on that, and we're going to hear more about that going forward, the idea that they have to put someone in the side position when they're restrained. We're also expecting to hear, Bernardo, from experts about the effects of the restraint on Floyd's body, uh, as well as the drugs in his system. We heard a little bit about that yesterday, as we said, but we're going to hear more about that today. What are you watching for in that testimony? So this is where now we get to the actual issues in this case, because now we're past the emotional part and what the eyewitnesses actually saw. So remember, all of that is captured on video, so there is no issue as to what they actually saw. However, the key issue in this case is going to be, one, the training of Derek Chauvin. What is it that they train him to actually do, especially when you're talking about putting uh, mechanical restraints on George Floyd being the handcuffs and actually having him in the prone position and actually having his knee on the body of George Floyd to what extent you can have the knee on the body of an individual that you're trying to restrain, especially when the person is not actually uh, being acting up, the person's not moving, he's not refusing. So you're going to hear about that. But more importantly, you're also going to hear about, and it's going to be coming in the coming days, you're going to hear from various experts as well as the medical examiner to testify what was the cause of the death of George Floyd. Because those are going to be the two key issues in the next coming days that are going to be on trial for everyone to actually see. And we'll be watching it closely. Attorney Bernardo Villalona. Bernardo, thanks for your analysis this morning. We appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.